Mr. Ballpoint, written by Gerald Everett Jones, narrated by Michael Gilbo, published by La Puerta Books and Media. Chapter 1 Sometimes you wonder how a thing started. The ballpoint pen, for example. Everybody has one. Nowadays they're so cheap they're throwaways, like disposable razors. But time was they were a luxury item, an expensive gift for that white-collar executive in your life who was on a rocket ship ride to the top. My name is Jim Reynolds, and seriously, I was trained as an engineer. I should have stuck to that. I really should have. All joking aside. So there I was in May of 1947, standing just outside the Oval Office. Yep, the one that's inside the White House. Where else is there an Oval Office? There's a novel idea. I really wonder if there's another one somewhere. I mean, the president doesn't exactly have a patent on the idea, right? It was amazing to be there for a lot of reasons. Mainly, I thought it was impossible, because the president must be an incredibly busy guy, and even though the war had been officially over for a while, helping Europe rebuild and keeping a careful eye on the Russians no doubt took up a lot of his time, even after we had the appointment set with him, I wondered whether we'd be able to meet him at all when I read in the paper that the White House was undergoing renovations. They'd moved the Trumans over to Blair House across the street, and I worried that if we were so lucky as to get in front of him, it might be in a hallway somewhere for about a minute. But it turned out that the Oval Office itself was still open for business every day. While work on the residence was going on, Mr. Truman and Bess slept over at Blair House, and the Secret Service took him back and forth each day to his office. Anyhow, I was standing there because I was too nervous to sit. And I was there, not because of anything I did, not really, but because of what my father did, or didn't do, or didn't necessarily mean to do. It'll take a while to explain. So seated behind the desk in front of me was Winifred, President Truman's personal secretary. She wasn't much of a looker, but then you wouldn't expect her to be. She was friendly enough, extremely well done up, I should say, but she came across as efficient and no-nonsense. You'd know he'd have insisted on that if you knew him, which I didn't. I didn't even vote for him later in 48, but that's another story, too. Winifred was one of those iron fist in a velvet glove types. Sweet, sincere smile, but she could cut you like a razor. Truman was running behind on his appointments that day. Not a situation I thought she'd have approved of, but I'm sure she managed it well enough with him being about as stubborn as a Missouri mule, or so they said. Didn't make me any more calm about meeting him, that's for sure. How much longer do you think? I asked her. Oh, just a few minutes, she said. He's just signing a bill. A lump came into my throat. I was nervous enough already, but the next thought had terrified me in all kinds of new ways. There must be a lot of dignitaries in there, including members of Congress. Reporters, too, for sure. Way to fail, in front of a crowd. Would he invite any of them to hang around after he asked for us to be shown in? Was there maybe another exit so they wouldn't all stampede through here? If not, and they poured out, should I be standing or sitting? Sitting, it seemed to me, would be a good plan. And don't stick your legs out. He wouldn't, uh, use a ballpoint to sign anything important, would he? She gave me the oddest look. And just then, I realized I hadn't urinated for about four hours. Ah, you got a restroom? I asked. She gave me one of those silent, angled wrist directions which indicated the general route to the toilet. I assumed the Secret Service would be following me, but I didn't mind. You have to do what you have to do. I bet lots of people have that problem right before they march into the Oval Office. So, I was at the urinal, about to let fly, and of course, that's when you relax, whether you want to or not. My mind popped right out of the moment, and I remembered that other time, the much more momentous time, at least from my personal viewpoint. 
Gerald Everett Jones is the author of the art history novel Bonfire of the Vanderbilts. The first book in his new mystery series is Preacher Finds a Corpse. He's also the host of Get Published Radio. Find help for self-published authors and free podcasts at getpublishedradio.com.